شارك سمو الشيخ ناصر بن حمد الخليفة ممثل جلالة الملك للعمال الإنسانية وشؤون الشباب في القمة العالمية للحكومات والتي أقيمت عبر تقنية البث المباشر عن بعد التي تقام تحت رعاية صاحب السمو الشيخ محمد بن راشد المكتوم نائب رئيس دولة الإمارات العربية المتحدة رئيس مجلس الوزراء حاكم دبي حيث شارك سموه برفقة نور الكعبي وزيرة الثقافة والشباب في دولة الإمارات العربية المتحدة حيث تستقطب القمة قادة ومتحدثين عالميين ونخبة من الخبراء والمتخصصين وعددا من مسؤولي المنظمات الدولية ورواد الأعمال من مختلف أنحاء العالم تحدث سمو الشيخ ناصر بن حمد الخليفة في جلسة حملت عنوان العقد القادم بقيادة الشباب حيث قال سموه مملكة البحرين وبتوجيهات من حضرة صاحب الجلالة الملك حمد بن عيسى الخليفة عاهل البلاد المفدع في دول الله ورعاه أعطت الشباب البحريني مساحة واسعة ومراكز قيادية بارزة الأمر الذي يؤكد توجه البحرين نحو تمكين الشباب بصورة حقيقية مبنية على أرض الواقع هو الأمر الذي ترجمه صاحب السمو الملكي الأمير سلمان بن حمد الخليفة ولي العهد رئيس مجلس الوزراء في تأكيد مكانة الشباب البحريني ضمن فريق البحرين وتمكينهم في مختلف المجالات أشار سمو الشيخ ناصر بن حمد الخليفة يمر العالم في هذه الفترة بتحديات كبيرة فرضتها جائحة كورونا وألقت بظلالها على العديد من القطاعات في العالم الأهم من ذلك هو كيفية الاستفادة من دروس التحديات التي فرضتها الجائحة لتشكل نقاط انطلاقة نحو بناء مستقبل مستقبل أفضل للعالم وتطوير القطاعات المختلفة لتتوافق وتتلائم مع التحديات التي قد تواجهها في المستقبل وتقديم استراتيجيات مبنية على أساليب علمية واضحة. تابع سمو الشيخ ناصر بن حمد الخليفة إن المتتبع لمسيرة جائحة كورونا يعلم تماما أهمية الجهود الكبيرة التي بذلها الشباب في مختلف دول العالم من أجل احتواء تحديات الجائحة وتبعاتها خاصة في ظل المتغيرات التي طرأت على العديد من المجالات الهامة والتي يشكل الشباب جزءا أساسيا منها من بينها مجالات الاقتصاد والتعليم وريادة الأعمال بالإضافة إلى القوى العاملة وتابع سمو الشيخ ناصر بن حمد الخليفة على الشباب أن يحدد في هذه الأيام المنطقة التي يقف عليها بعد تداعيات التي فرضتها جائحة كورونا ولا بد له أن يبدأ برسم طريق المستقبل المشرق وتحديد الأولويات الشبابية باعتبار الشباب يمثلون قادة المستقبل وتقع على عاتقهم مفردات تخط الجائحة والعمل على إعادة ترتيب العالم وفق الأولويات والأهداف الأساسية والبحث عن الفرص وسط كل هذه التحديات والظروف الصعبة والعمل على تنفيذ خطط وبرامج استراتيجية واعدة تساهم في تقوية الاقتصاديات العالمية وابتكار مشروعات جديدة تتوافق مع الجائحة أشار سمو الشيخ ناصر بن حمد الخليفة يجب علينا خلق منصات متنوعة ومبتكرة للتواصل على مع الشباب بطريقة أفضل من أجل صياغة المستقبل المنشود القائم على وضع الشباب في المقدم في المقدمة والقيادة باعتبار الشباب الأقدر على التغيير والأقدر على الإنجاز والتحرك في سبيل بناء المستقبل والعمل على ضرورة دعم الشباب وإدخالهم في دائرة صنع القرار باعتبارهم الأقدر على توصيف المستقبل أكد سمو الشيخ ناصر بن حمد الخليفة أنه لا بد من الاستثمار في الشباب بالصورة الأمثل والوقوف إلى جانبهم لقيادة بلدانهم ودعم ريادتهم وإبداعاتهم وتميزهم لأنهم سيكونون الركيزة الأساسية الداعمة لتطور وسط الأفكار التي يمتلكونها والتي دائما ما تكون مبتكرة ومتوافقة مع متطلبات العصر خلال مشاركة سموه طرح سمو الشيخ ناصر بن حمد الخليفة العديد من الأفكار والرؤى حول تمكين الشباب وأهمية ترسيخ حب المعرفة والاستطلاع والإبداع في نفوسهم لإحياء الأمل في المستقبل والتأكيد على دور الشباب في بناء الأوطان بالعلم والاجتهاد والأفكار والتي تقوم تقوم العالم إلى بناء منظومة متكاملة من التنمية المستدامة والتي تساهم في تطور العالم بشكل أفضل. His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, His Majesty the King's Representative. for humanitarian work and youth affairs of the Kingdom of Bahrain. His Highness is here with us to share his thoughts on empowering the youth and the importance of cultivating curiosity and creativity to restore hope for the years ahead. We're going through unprecedented situations, 
The COVID-19 pandemic has presented to us unsettling changes in all aspects of our lives. The pandemic has had an impact on the youth, their education, employment, business plans. The resultant situation needs to be addressed. In this context, I would like to engage your highness on a few pressing issues related to the youth. We would like to know how you see the role of youth in the current circumstances. And I suppose our focus should be on how to transform the challenges into opportunities. Your highness, would you like to make some introductory remarks before I ask the questions? Uh, um, um, I would like, first of all, to thank this um, beautiful organization of the World Government Summit. Um, I hope um, the outcome of this summit and the uh, ideas that will be presented today uh, will be fruitful. Uh, please allow me as well to thank uh, my brother, Sahib uh, al Sheikh Hamdan bin Muhammad bin Rashid al Maktoum, Wali Yahd al Bayi, ala itahta lil fursa, and giving me the, the privilege uh, to come here as a speaker and to share my thoughts uh, with you all. Thank you. It's certainly wonderful to be here with you virtually. And I'm sure this is going to be an exciting session hearing from you. My first question is, how does this road to recovery and rehabilitation look to your highness, particularly for the youth? What are the anticipated changes with regards to the youth in the coming period? Uh, um, Noura, you know, you, you've, uh, you've touched base a, a, uh, a topic that really is sincere to my heart and is actually um, my day-to-day -day concern. It's always in the back of my head. It's always ahead of my agenda. So first of all, uh, first thing comes to understand the impact of COVID-19. Uh, we really need to understand that it has come at the intersection of one, an international economic correction where youth were already fearing the unknown uh, with regards to their uh, livelihood uh, and to a mass global pandemic that restricted movement and separated communities into automized cells, injecting the sense of uh, loneliness and removing the sense of community. Um, three, um, an unprecedented internet penetration, which dissipates images of the perfect life, injecting a sense of, um, let me describe it, inadequacy. So our youths are uh, feeling fear of the future and their chances of survival, fear of the unknown, alone, inadequate, while social media shows the uh, good life. This is the perfect storm. Um, if statesmen, communities, and governments don't recognize the risk, and if they don't move quickly, to mitigate losses to their future, recognizing that their youth is their future, um, the impact will be uh, dire and uh, severe. Um, but for those countries that recognize this, there is an incredible opportunity. Uh, the community that gets uh, this right, in my opinion, um, will secure an incredibly prosperous future for its people. Uh, and I believe that our King, His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa Allah Ta'ala Umrah, has gotten this right and had ordered uh, that we double down efforts in adapting and evolving our youth sector and to do so institutionally. Uh, His Majesty ordered that we undertake the following. Um, first of all, observing youth's uh, emotions. His Majesty had taught us that it's not enough for the youth uh, to be safe. He must feel safe as well. Um, so we developed the, what I call the five plus one, emotional data points that we wish to develop. For the first time, we are actively attempting to track our youth's feeling to see how we can help them in an institutional matter. Um, as you know, perception is everything. Uh, we want to know if they feel safe, seen, supported, wanted, trusted, and most importantly, hopeful. That's my five plus one. Uh, environmentally, we want to join uh, 
or we want to know if they perceive Bahrain to be an open, competitive, and just environment where they can reach their individual aspirations with minimum interferences. Um, second topic as well, synthesizing and creating hope. Actively manage the positive narrative. This is our light at the end of the dark tunnel to guide our youth. We are shedding light on opportunities. Um, open, Noura, you, you, you know Bahrain really well, uh, but open any newspaper in Bahrain and see the endless pages of real jobs opportunities waiting for our youth. We are developing a unified online national portal called FARAS, uh, which is currently in its better stage of development of internship, apprenticeships, and upskilling opportunities. Um, we are shedding light on real success stories from rags to riches through discipline and perseverance. Um, we are teaching youth uh, to plan and execute. Uh, Noor, I might uh, warn you that you have to buckle up because you have touched base the, the, the topic of my life, so I'm going to keep on going. Um, we are uh, redeveloping our youth center to become youth empowerment centers. Uh, the key objective of the centers is to teach youth uh, tools to plan and execute their future in a safe, cooperative, and in a positive celebratory community where uh, the team celebrates each individual's win. Uh, we teach them also to author their futures, uh, write your target, write down your plan, put an aligned positive team and community around you to support. Revisit this periodically. Um, if we are successful there, we will inject this into the education system. Um, and focus on that because we are taking it step by step. So we are partnering with our youth uh, through Hope Fund. We have just launched the Hope Fund whose mandate is to create programs um, which allows for the selection of youth initiatives, businesses, and social ventures. For financial partnerships, um, our job is to, first of all, discover, then monitor and groom, and then showcase to the world uh, our um, success story. So um, the conclusion um, is that the youth sector has been disrupted by COVID-19 and must, will evolve, and the direction is clear to us. But that the opportunities um, to get this right and have our youth um, end up are rampant. Uh, we are positive. Uh, that the future can will be full of opportunities for our youth. Yeah. Thank you, Highness. I'm 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 not surprised uh, specifically by knowing uh, uh, your passion, uh, the way you encourage and empower youth. Um, you have the mindset of an Iron Man. Uh, winning uh, is the only uh, option, uh, and I think that you know everything you laid down is something that. Uh, we all, not just the youth, um, you know, even even us or even governments or, or or institutions is important for them to look into. So thank you very much. This was really inspiring. And and your highness, there's always the question uh, with regards to uh, what's happening right now in the economy, the economic recovery, uh, which is in everyone's mind nowadays, um, with the slowdown, with the, you know, with the limiting of timing and everything with the pandemic. Um, it's important to hear advice in terms of how they can help their societies and countries in such economic recovery. Do you think youth in our region are, are better equipped to contribute to their uh, counterparts to elsewhere? Um, yes, actually, if one looks around today, we will note and appreciate that the hopeful positive spirit of the youth is what fuels all the new solutions of today's challenges. Uh, it's not easy. Um, this will no doubt continue and more so now than ever. Uh, for today's challenges, uh, we need new solutions and new fresh ideas. And the youth are strategically positioned uh, to provide this new uh, insights, considering that they have not been indoctrinated by old dogmatic uh, processes. Um, youths are extremely well placed and ready for original thoughts. 
which is what we need today and going forward. Therefore, this is essential to now put in systems to listen to youth ideas and to experiment and execute what works. We have also um, remember that youths are very vested in current problems because the future is theirs. So they will do what is necessary to protect it and protect their community. Uh, this applies in all realms. Uh, this applies in the societal activity, or I, I, oh, sorry, uh, social activities, um, and community buildings and integration, in uh, commerce and uh, businesses where they will uh, invigorate the economy. Um, and also, last but not least, in the social science spheres uh, and reformulating and aligning our social contract uh, together. So it's a huge uh, picture that I'm seeing and we have to put it all together. But what is key and what is the heart uh, of this question is, let's remember that the future is theirs. So they have to, they have to shape it towards the, um, the goal they have to achieve. Absolutely, Your Highness. Uh, and I believe with, with your continuous government efforts, um, especially in our region, um, uh, to empower the youth in all aspects of, as you mentioned, from economy to social life, uh, how do you see the future uh, roadmap uh, for governments in boosting the next generation's role? Uh, because this is always a question right, right now with regards to what's next. Um, um, and how can we maximize their skills, uh, uh, capacities, and roles? Um, I think it would be interesting, Your Highness, um, to uh, if we can, if you can reflect uh, on the following areas, such as youth participation and decision making, their engagement in social initiatives, um, entrepreneurship, um, and so on. And basically, uh, Nora, you mean as well youth empowerment in this sense. So I will, I, will, I, will, I will stay in between these two brackets or else I'm gonna go on and on, believe me. So there's no question that the positive effect of youth empowerment is immense and touches on all segments of society. Uh, but the key positive effect is original thought, uh, innovation and freeing energy and resources to build even greater projects uh, for mankind. Um, let me give you some examples to explain what empowering uh, youth does education uh, we were told uh, that education is when you physically go to class and sit with your peers for seven or eight hours a day in a school classroom in an attempt to be molded uh, followed by endless hours of homework um, shows you what type of student i was um, youth have now gamified education through apps, games that teach you languages, skills, and giving you points, allowing you to compete, um, crowdsource problem solving, where problems are shared with public community online and resolved, um, online education, where you learn at your own pace and based on your own interest, um, flexible home learning, uh, which is melting away, the age-based grade system and focusing on your capability. Imagine a, 11 year old kid uh, doing calculus because he can. So, you know, it, it, it's incredible. Um, I'm, I'm a father of four kids and they, they surprise me every day. So this is one huge sector. Second sector is the jobs. Now this is the real deal here uh, to tell the students, welcome to the real world. So we were told that jobs are where you go for eight Eight or more hours to perform a particular task with no freedom. Um, youth are now freeing themselves and have now changed the idea of jobs. Um, let me explain. The idea of a collection of jobs instead of one job. Uh, online por portals where you can tender specific work to specific people and pay them for that work only. Uh, individuals as subcontractors where each person acts like their own company like an Uber driver, for instance, uh, with his own car, uh, free to accept many jobs or not. Um, Incentive-based uh, payment schemes uh, where youths now want a, park, uh, a pop, want a part of the risk and part of the reward as well. Um, employees are no longer being rated by employers only. 
Now, employees are also rating their employers. So as you can see, uh, there is a lot of positive that comes from empowering and freeing youths to reach their aspirations and to solve the community's problems and address their needs. The net positive effect, believe me, is tremendous. Your, your Highness, uh, your answer is perfect, Keith. It was a perfect uh, for our next question with regards to the future of youth and their employment. And, uh, and, and, I, and I see how you even, uh, you know, uh, interact with your kids of, uh, in the future who will be winning. I loved the video of after six years, who's going to be winning and, and galloping. And, 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 and I saw this video like three times in, in a row. No, um, they would lose the bet. I will not. I will not surrender. <laughs> <laughs> so we so, so we wait for the next six years and see who wins. But I, 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 and I think this is where uh, it's amazing with with with. You as a father mentioned on the pluses and minuses uh, of a remote work. We are meeting remotely. Um, and, and given the special character, characteristics of the millennials uh, and giving their mastery in the use of new technologies, uh, this question is very interesting. How do you think remote work can help support youth employment? Can this change the levels of unemployment am among the Arab youth? Uh, beautiful. Arab communities. So I, I don't like to alienate ourselves uh, away from what, what, what's so called or the perception that people think. Because, you know, Arabs today are uh, roaming around Mars, and thanks to you all over there. So it, it, it gives us this power. And I'm already having goosebumps right now while talking about our, our ability. Uh, to to bring back our history and and I'm not a person who talks in, in, in the past but it's very good to remind our people about our history and whom we are what were we what did we do and then what are we looking forward to so back to back to our subject. So the whole idea of employment seems to be evolving in front of us, right? And it seems like it's time to redefine unemployment and the way we track it and address it. Um, technology can play a big role in helping our fellow citizens. Uh, employment has always and historically been physical attendance at the site with a single group taking instructions from a single authority. Uh, part of a larger institution. Well, what we see on the ground is, is a changing landscape. Um, we see youths uh, subscribing to become Uber or Kareem drivers when available uh, while still keeping their other jobs on uh, or businesses' uh, interests. Uh, we see youth uh, have multiple uh, freelancing online jobs through portals such as Upwork. Uh, we see youths working remotely for a single employer at home or in a coffee shop. Um, we see youths creating content online and in their particular fields and monetizing their brand and content. Therefore, we must first revisit the metrics for defining unemployment. So the new definition of unemployment should and I need you to think with me as well, but this is my, my opinion. Um, so the new definition of unemployment should encompass those citizens that are temporarily unproductive individuals due to circumstances cannot secure an income through voluntary interactions, regardless if it's a single employer, multiple employers, whether in a country or abroad. Um, these individuals are owed targeted support from our society that fits their needs and prepares them for future success because we all want to thrive uh, together. Now, you've been asking me questions, Nora. Here's a million dollar question. 
why do we need to redefine unemployment? I'll give you my answer. Uh, text me yours. So, because the alternative is to stigmatize the many millions of young individuals that are productive and thriving in their uh, own way. These productive individuals should not be recorded as unemployed when they are productive members uh, of society. So remote work and similar innovations will no doubt change the unemployment uh, landscape and provide endless opportunities to our youth. But we as regulators and legislators will need to actively support to provide the right environment for the opportunities to flourish. Your Highness, um, you certainly uh, gave me a glimpse of a hopeful future. Uh, I hope for Bahrain, for the people of Bahrain and worldwide. I appreciate your leadership, your wisdom uh, and your time. Thank you so much uh, for joining us at the World Government Summit. Thank you. The, the, the pleasure is all mine. Thank you very much. Uh, you keep uh, um, really uh, pushing hard and, and bringing the best of the best around. And you really uh, are doing a great job over there. So thanks to you all. I hope I didn't state any of the obvious. I hope I helped just a little bit. And as, as you know, I'm always hopeful. I'm always positive, well, not COVID positive, but our positive person, I mean, who really looks forward to uh, a, a, a prosperous um, um, many coming years, inshallah. So let's be positive. Let's think forward. Let's take those challenges because the future is ours, inshallah. Absolutely. Thank you, Your Highness. You're welcome.